All right. We're getting there. Hi. Hello. This is Audrey. She's going to hang out until we uh, get started here. Give it a couple minutes. I woke her. Checking on the sound. He lied to me. He was saying we didn't have any sound, but apparently we do. So, should be fine. You can hear me perfectly. How exciting. <laughs> oh, all right. Hope everyone's doing well. We're uh, going to get started here in just a couple minutes. I'm bothering her. Hello, Lindsay. Hi. <laughs> We're getting really good sound I'm hearing from the other room, so that's that's always a, a plus. Oh, nice. All right. Uh, if you're just joining us, this is a musings with, well, Maria today. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the, some of the history of the museum, and uh, I'm going to be able to show you some photos of some different parts and talk about different aspects. Hi. She has kind of a weird face. Hi, Steph. I did see that. Yeah, Lindsay mentioned that the, some of our programming got a mention on uh, NPR, which is amazing. Everyone's doing a really good job trying to make all this work, so. Well done. Now she doesn't want to get down. Oops. I'm breaking stuff. I didn't break the dog, though, so she's fine. All right, I'm supposed to give this a couple minutes. And Max has it set up to where I can supposed to be able to control this on my own. So we'll see what happens. Hi, Lori. How are you and Marv doing? <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. I guess we'll get started. Um, that's always just a, such a fun little segment there. I'll come up with something better for that time next go around. Um, so I'm Maria Castley. I'm the uh, chief archivist and tour manager at City Museum. And uh, we're here with Musings with Stephanie and Maria. Stephanie took Monday, so I'm taking today. Uh, we're going to talk about a little bit about um, the City Museum and we're going to focus today on some of the rules that, design rules that we have at the museum. Um, so the museum's kind of, the City Museum, for those of you who have been there, know this to be true. Uh, for those of you that haven't, come visit us later. Uh, museum, the museum's its own world. It's uh, created by artists, which is one of the reasons why we love it so much. It's kind of makes its own rules. It has its own standards. Um, yeah, it's very like world building. Um, we do have some directions and some rules that we set down. There's like the regular day-to-day -day rules, no running, don't, you know, feet first down the slide, no headshots in the ball pit. I'm sure anyone else that is uh, on floor staff would be able to add some more to those, but that's, those are our, our general rules right now. Um, but especially early on under the direction of Bob Cassidy, one of the founders of the museum, there were a few design rules that they would follow as well. And there are obviously exceptions to these, but 
there were some like general directions. Um, last week on Wednesday, we talked a little bit about how anything's a brick if you have enough of it, which is how we ended up with, you know, a wall of Twinkie pans. Um, but uh, this, for this one, we're going to talk a little bit about, these are some of the rules we're going to go over in the next couple of weeks. I'm pulling them together here. <laughs> one of them um, that we'll talk about today is no straight lines. A couple other rules are natural light whenever possible, no dead ends, and repetition in shape and form. So, yeah, today's focus is going to be on no straight lines. Um, if there's anything that anybody has any questions about or uh, favorite parts or stories or anything like that that they want to share, go ahead and leave them in the comments. I'll be kind of checking on them while we're going through the photos. Uh, and... Yeah, and uh, let's see, we will get started. Let's see if I can switch this over. You can watch me putter around on the computer. All right, hey. <laughs> All right, so this one, this is kind of what you see when you first walk in. This is the first floor. Um, you can see a lot of the curves around here. One of them uh, is in the ceiling around the giant suspended rock. The others are on the creatures uh, going up that make up the stairwell. You can also see them in the pond on the bottom. Uh, there are some, there are a few straight lines like the, the rollers on the, rail, the stair rail. Those are from a conveyor belt, but those still follow the pattern of the back of the creature. These, these lines that they added in here, they're in, you know, stark contrast to what the building started out originally, like the, um, it started out as an industrial uh, box, essentially. It was an international, uh, it was the International Shoe Factory. So the crew would add, you know, organic shapes and lines throughout their installations. This one that's coming up here is also on the first floor. Uh, it's kind of what you, let's see, it's the sea creatures. So the big curves of the giant whale, you can see the, the ramp leading up through the whale is at a curve as well. The ceiling is, what is the ceiling made of? Fiberglass. Fiberglass? Yes. <laughs> yes, fiberglass, yes, he tells me from the other room. Um, the ceiling, uh, it's made of strips of fiberglass that kind of, uh, it's really soft. It goes, uh, undulates, I guess would be a good word for that. Um, so that kind of softens the harsh line of the ceiling as well. Let's see, this next one, this is a early photo of the first floor aquarium. It's uh, the, some of the creatures aren't painted yet. There's not any water in there. Um, this was when they were doing a uh, revamp of it. So they had drained all of it so they could work in there some more and add some more mosaics and sculptures. See, and actually the, I just found this out uh, the other day. I found a little card that uh, was in a box that said that the I-beam, that you can see that green bar going above the aquarium, that that was from the Polar Wave Ice Building. And that's significant, as some of you may know that it was a f building that was formerly owned by the Castleys and sold to the Mater Ma uh, Missouri Botanical Gardens in the early 90s. Um, and then that is significant because the money that it received from that sale was then used to buy the city museum building. And I also want to point out, he's moving stuff on me. <laughs> I also want to point out the mosaics that are on the bottom there. Um, those go throughout the first floor, um, they continue on throughout the building, uh, but that was the first big installation was on the first floor. And some of you are local to St. Louis might notice that they seem a little bit familiar. Somebody pointed this out on one of the tours that I was giving and asked if they were from Venice Cafe. And they were correct. Uh, Venice Cafe is a local restaurant, bar, and venue for those of you that don't know. This is a photo of one of their stairwells. Um, 
there were a lot of mosaic artists that came over from there in the beginning to help out at the museum when it opened. One of them was Sharon Von Senden. She still works at the museum and uh, she's, she stayed the longest and did a lot of the work there. Uh, so she's one of the original mosaic artists. And we hope she's doing well and we look forward to seeing her soon. The next one, these are uh, some more, more curves and shapes. So going around the pillar is one of the slinky climber. That one's on the first floor. This guy, it's a cooling unit from the, um, that was made for brewing beer. So that came out of like a, a brewery. Uh, so that one was, was used from a found object and then it was curved around uh, by the crew. A lot of the other climbers and stuff are made by the crew. Those will be in the next photo. This is on the second floor going up to the third floor. So you'll see a lot of the climbers, uh, a lot of them were used, uh, they use materials like rebar and stuff like that to make them. And we encourage everyone to climb, but you know, use sense. If you don't think you can fit in it, please don't. See, here's another example of some of the organic shapes. So you'll see the rebar and then not only the railing but then the shadows that are cast from the railing too and then you know and then also the hole that's dug in the middle that's looking up from i believe the third floor looking down into the first floor um, before they expanded the tree house and then not just using metal using um tree limbs and stuff like that too oops i, I just heard sorry from the back room there <laughs> Okay. You good? Okay. Okay. Give me one second. We're working this out. All right. I think we're good. He, he tells me we're good, so we're going to keep going. Um, what are you doing? The, uh, so this guy, this is from the, looking up from the first floor up. Um, so it's not just metal climbers. Uh, Bob would often use tree limbs and the crew kind of continues to do that as well for to add like more additional organic shapes and stuff like that. Uh, where did these trees come from? He does not remember. I thought he would, otherwise I wouldn't have asked, but it's all right, we're moving on. Um, where's the, all right. So yeah, the museum draws heavily on organic shapes, you know, creatures, nature, and then kind of blends it together with the fabricated metal. Let's see this next guy. So this is sort of a iconic photo of the caves that you see in a lot of places. Um, these are more creatures that were built, you know, living in the, in the bottom, the first floor of this industrial building. Um, if you have any photos or stories or anything like that about the museum, um, you can always email us at mpr at citymuseum.org. We're super excited to hear uh, what you have to say. And anything that you think like, you know, belongs on the tour, any photos or yeah, stories about Bob or the crew or anything like that, if you want to share them with us, we would love to hear them. Uh, yeah, it's at uh, mpr at citymuseum.org. So the museum, as some of you might know, we mentioned earlier was a shoe factory. So these slides that you see right here, those are, those are original to the building. They were used to move merchandise down from the top floors to the bottom floors. And then we kept them and used them to move people. <laughs> so yeah, these are all originally the building, and then they were you kind of like mirrored and expanded the curves um, with with sculpture as we built them out. I think only one of them was removed, I believe. He keeps telling me to hold on while I'm uh, trying to shift the pictures for reasons that I'm not clear on yet. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I'm trying to hit the next picture, Max. Okay. He's expanding. Okay, uh, so 
Can we go to the next one? It's fine. Okay. So this is another example of the climbers in the caves and you can see a lot of like twists and turns and more things you can like scale and explore and crawl through. So kind of natural shapes made out of rebar. We do obviously have some straight lines because you know we don't want the building to fall over. Um, but even when they are there, they'll uh, kind of like we did on the um, on the stairwell. The like these also like follow the curves of the building. And then this guy, we're gonna go outside. That's a stairwell off of Monstro. So I, I believe that they built this stairwell from from scratch. I don't think it's from a building specifically. Um, I could be wrong about that. If I'm wrong, please let me know and I'll add it in on the tour. Uh, so this one, so they could, what? Yes. Okay. He's fixing the photos apparently as we're doing this. Um, but anyway, so we'll, we'll keep moving on. Uh, so yeah, so that structure, that was, uh, so they could have easily just built, since we're building everything from, from scratch a lot of times, you could make it just where it just went straight up there. But instead they took the time to go through and, and, uh, and curve it and move it up to the next, um, uh, move it up to the next, the next uh, platform there. All right, next photo. All right, now we're gonna head up to the roof. I appreciate everyone hanging out while we try and get through this, by the way. <laughs> um, let's see, so yeah, the rooftop. So this is another example that you kind of see in the caves that's reflected up on the rooftop. Um, the organic creatures around the fountains and everything like that that they uh, that were built. Um, another good example is on the rooftop, this structure with the round tower, spiral staircase, the bridgeway leading into it. And We'll get another up close shot. That one is, uh, oh, thanks. I'm glad. <laughs> hi, Ian. Uh, and hi, Lori. Hi, other Lori. So all the Lori's are watching, which is super exciting. Um, Lori Matter will uh, be able to tell us if we uh, missed any any rules from floor staff. Uh, all right, so yeah, this is another angle to kind of show you the bridge up close, the intricate work on the fence, a, a curved archway leading into the spiral staircase. And now, as we've just spent all that time saying what rules we have, uh, this is a photo of the crew, a more recent photo showing them mapping out the maze that's going to be opening on the fourth floor, which will hopefully open sometime in the near future. Uh, they're in the midst of building it and it's super exciting. Yeah, no, we did cover no running, Lori, I promise. It's one of the first ones. Um, so, since it is the museum, we kind of make our own rules uh, sometimes and some of those are made to be broken occasionally. Uh, the, the One of the design rules, being no straight lines, we do have a, they did map out a grid on the fourth floor there are also some curves in there. The yellow um, are the yellow spots that you can kind of see. Those are going to be like curved doorways that go back and forth is the plan, uh, as well as multiple exits, which we'll get into more when we talk about the no dead ends uh, area of things. Um, the no dead ends episode. So part of I find anyway, um, part of what makes the museum strong is that it's not just the rules. Uh, you have to set rules for yourself to kind of give you a world to work inside, but you can also break those. And I think that um, part of what makes the museum strong are all the different ideas and creative visions for the people who work there. Yeah. All right. Well, we I think we got through that. Um, let's 
see. Hello, we're back. I feel like I should have a dog again, but we'll see, you know. <laughs> we'll see if they show up. I don't know where they ran off to. Um, thanks for getting, getting through that with me. Uh, we appreciate you watching all of our programming. See, uh, I'm wrapping it up. It's been a, kind of a long day, as I'm sure it has been for some of you guys as well. Uh, definitely check out uh, more of our programming. Um, you can get to that on our full schedules on the City Museum of this video. And again, if you have any photos or stories or anything that you to mpr at citymuseum.org and I am very excited to get back to work and show everyone around and take care of each other and we hope to see you in the very near in the near future all right thanks guys